got this one here when I was seven years old trying to be Tarzan when the tire swing broke this one's from high school when I drove off bad tore down that dirt road took the corner too fast Got this one one summer on the bank of Salt Creek. My brother thought he caught a big one, but it was just me. There's one on my heart when I saw my daddy cry, when they folded up the flag, when his daddy died. Every scar has a story to tell, how life left its mark on me. I can't forget how it felt The memories are carved so deep Just proof that I'm living That's what they are Every scar has a story to tell Well, everybody's got them Reminders of the past Some make us cry And some make us laugh Some we wear with honor Some we try to hide The ones that change my life the most Aren't even mine They covered the back Of an innocent man He's got him from nails In his feet and his hands there's one on his side where a sword cut him deep. They're all over him instead of me. Every scar has a story to tell how love left its mark on me. I can't forget how it felt. The memories are carved so deep. Just proof I'm forgiven, that's what they are. His scars have that story to tell. Every scar a story to tell how life left its mark on me I can't forget how it felt the memories are carved so deep this proof that I'm living that's what they are every scar has a story to tell every has a story to tell. Wow, what a great song. Every scar has a story to tell. And you know, as we could show our scars to friends and others and We'd have a story to tell them how we got that scar. But what a powerful song when it ties it in about the scars of Jesus and the story they have to tell, the only story that can tell us how we can be forgiven of our sins and live eternally. What a powerful song and what a privilege to be able to sing it today. You know, we have these scars that can tell the story of our life. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, certainly had scars in his body. He said, I bear on my body the marks of the cross of the suffering and the punishment he went through for the cause of Christ. But you know one thing that stands out to me as far as the Apostle Paul is that he said several times in the Bible, be like me. Now, I can't go to all those passages tonight, but I want to go to one in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians where Paul makes that statement. He's telling this to the Corinthians who had had a great church he helped to start it, but then they got out 
and began living very worldly because they thought they're forgiven of their sins. So if they're forgiven of their sins, they can live how they want, even if it displeases God, and ask forgiveness. And Paul was kind of calling them to task for that. You can't do it that way. You've got to live for the Lord. And Paul said, you need to live your life in a way that others could follow. And he said in chapter 11, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. I want us to think about that tonight. I told the members of my church, because I've said this to them before more than once, and I told them I was going to point into the television camera and say to all the ones watching tonight, particularly to church members, what if every member of your church was just like you. <laughs> what kind of church would you have, amen or oh me? Would there be things lacking in your church? Would you be the kind of church that Jesus desires for us to have? Well, this message tonight is not one that I'll go verse by verse. I read through the Bible every year and have done so since I was 26 years old. And I, I tell you, each year, I find that as I read through the Bible, it's more he must increase in my life and I must decrease. And there's so little now that I desire in what we would call worldly fame and recognition and all that. But I want to live my life in a way that I could tell people, be like me. Because I seek to be like Jesus. And as I read through the Word every year, they're just things that you call to mind that you remember over and over again. And so this passage tonight, or this verse and the message, is based more on thinking back through the whole life of the Apostle Paul. I could go back, everything I say tonight, I could give you a specific scripture and read it if we had time. But I just want to use this tonight as a challenge to you and a challenge to me. Could we... Tell people, be like me and you'll be the kind of Christian. You'll be Christ-like. You'll be the kind of person God wants you to be. Well, Paul was able to do that, and he said it several times in the first chapter, first and second Corinthians. He talked about his example and how they ought to live his and how some were living the right way. And that's how we ought to be. And so let's just think about this tonight. Be like me. Paul could tell the world be like me in witnessing. Now Paul eventually had a full-time itinerant ministry. He was a tent maker at one time in his life, but then he was able to give his full-time efforts to what we would call an evangelistic ministry and went from town to town and country to country on his mission trips. And he witnessed to people about how to be saved. But you know what the most important thing was with Paul? It's something he had that all of us have. Every Christian has a salvation story. We need to learn passages of Scripture that can help to reinforce what we say. But Paul had a pretty drastic experience on the road to Tarsus. Now, not all of us will have that drastic an experience in getting saved, but all of us need to be saved. And what is your salvation story? Why well, I got saved. Why, what my life was like before I got saved and what it's been like since. And it ought to be such that since you've been growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, and you could tell others, be like me, but be like me in witnessing. You know, sometimes I think that we set our efforts way too high. The one thing that I seek to encourage the members of my church and even through this television program you know, before you set high standards of I'm going to reach X amount per year, and you might not be able to, reach one person. Each one can reach one. Ask God to put upon your heart someone whom you can reach for the gospel. And God will desire to answer that prayer, and He'll do it. So each one reach one. And tell your salvation story in some way and allow the world, word and the Lord to work through you to be able to help lead a sinner to Christ. I mean, folks, there are scores of ways today 
to share your testimony. With social media what it is, you just think you make a post on Facebook about something God's done for you or share a scripture about how to be saved. And sometimes your friends will share that. And what you share can be known to hundreds of people, even thousands of people. Just share your testimony in some way and be like Paul in witnessing. Secondly, Paul said, be like me in reading the Bible. Now, many of Paul's writings became the Bible as we know it. But he did have some scriptures. He knew the Old Testament scriptures. But Paul even wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, From a child you have known the scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. And I know that Paul studied the Bible. It's imperative for Christians to get into the Word of God. And as you get into the Word of God, to get the Word of God into you and to grow in the faith. What other book claims to be a light to your path and claims that if you hide the Word of God in your heart, you won't sin and do others wrong, you'll live right, that forever it is the Word of God. The Bible claims that. That's why it ought to be a part of our daily lives as Christians. I heard someone uh, promoting a certain kind of Bible and they said in there that it's, it's geared that if you read it for five minutes every day, you can get through the Word of God in one year. Now let me tell you folks, you can find five minutes a day to read the Word of God. We can find time to do anything we want to do, don't you? And so, you know, five minutes, I love to be able to spend a half hour to an hour some days in prayer, as, in prayer and Bible study as I have the time. But there is little... In the Bible, some people say, well, I don't understand all the these and thous and so forth. Folks, that's just a small, small part of the Bible. There's enough in the Bible that you can understand if you read long enough. You know, Mark Twain said, it's not the parts of the Bible I don't understand that bother me. It's the parts I do. <laughs> and I tell you, I mean, in our life, sometimes when we read and see how we fall short of God's plan, it ought to inspire us. So Paul said, be like me in reading the Bible, be like me in witnessing, be like me in attending church. This is not a day for slacking off in church attendance. And that's the very thing that's happening most places. Most growing churches today are not reaching lost and unchurched. They're getting some other church's members. And often those members go to that other church because where they are is too small and it doesn't have children's ministries or it doesn't have that. And they go to a church that has the programs and really I call them shirt tail Christians. They ride the shirt tails of someone else. They're not doing something where they are to, to show the world how a church member ought to be and say, be like me. So Paul Whenever he got to a community, he found out where the synagogue was. But he also would find out where is the place where people pray. And that was the first place that Paul would go. And so he would always find a place where Christians would gather. You know, lost people are usually surprised when Christians don't attend church. They know the Sunday is the Lord's day and expect us to. And that's a simple way you can witness to somebody by attending church. And in your church, focus on what is good about your church and what is good about other churches. And be cautious. Don't ever say anything negative about another church. And especially don't say anything negative about your church. There are ways to work through things in a church situation where you don't make it known by others. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a restaurant on a Sunday after church services or Sunday night, and I hear people near me talking about their church and something they don't like. I tell you, I tell our folks, focus on what's good and build upon that. So Paul said, be like me in attending church and being faithful. Paul also could say, be like me in tithing and giving. In the fourth chapter of Philippians, Paul said, I've learned that in whatsoever state I'm in to be content, whether I've got a lot 
or whether I don't. And he went through some great sufferings in his life, but he also went through times of abundance. But Paul was always content because he was in a right relationship with God. But, you know, I've heard through the years, sometimes the people who complain the most in a church about their finances are the ones who give the least. My wife happened to be a secretary for a man who was close to the pastor of the church we attended when we first got married. And the financial secretary needed some help on doing the end of the year statements of the church. And so my wife did that. Now, she didn't tell me who gave what or whatever, but she told me one day, said, you'd be surprised at who you think gives a lot to this church, doesn't. And then she said, some of the people you'd have no idea had any money at all are some of the highest givers. See, that's the way it is in a lot of churches. Supporting the Lord's work financially, though, is not a choice. It's a command. We are to be tithers. And you know, if every church member tithe, churches would be looking for places to give some of their money to. 20% of the people in a church give 80% of the needed income. I've been going through, I'm trying to clear out clutter, even files and things like that, and I've gone through uh, church newsletters where I used to write an article every week, you know, 50 a year or so. And I was going through a church where I was for eight years and going through those newsletters. And I was there back in 94 to 2002. And I forgot some of the pe people who got saved, some married couples who had been church members a long time getting saved. And you know, it was a blessing to do that. But one of the things I came across is that one year, and we had more than one year like this, but in our church, we not only had the tithes and offerings come in to meet our budget, but we had a surplus. And I'd forgotten all about this. But I went to our deacons and finance committee and I said, you know, we ought to give some money away. God has blessed us. And that year we gave $10,000 to Mid-America Seminary where, where I graduated from. And they are not supported financially by the co-opted program of the Southern Baptist Convention. So they need donations they're dependent on donations so we gave them ten thousand dollars and then we gave ten thousand dollars to the baptist children's home because a couple in our church uh, were the house parents of one of the cottages and they bring their kids to our church this was above what we had already budgeted to give to those ministries and others and man that, that was a blessing i'm telling you church members tithe Churches would have more than they need and they'd be looking for places to give it away. We've said that Paul could say, be like me in witnessing, be like me in reading the Bible, be like me in attending church, be like me in your tithing and giving. And Paul could say, be like me in praying. I mean, just about every book that Paul wrote, particularly to a group of Christians, when he started it out, he would talk about how I'm praying for you. And then he would tell things that he would pray to God in thanksgiving for them about. And then he would tell some things he was praying specifically for them. So be like Paul in praying. Paul shared specific prayers in most of those Bible books. When he went to a new town, and it was not the Sabbath, he would say, where is the place that the women go to pray? He knew there would be praying women, so that is what Paul would do, and he would find believers there. And then he found where the people went to pray, and he knew if the people were there praying, they were committed Christians beyond the norm. And you know, he not only prayed for the churches and God's blessings to be on them, and prayed for others, but Paul prayed for his personal needs. When the Lord didn't do something the way he asked, he didn't rebel. He just asked God to help him find the right way and give him the strength to do it. But Paul was faithful in his praying. Oh, if we as church members today would really catch this vision of praying not only for my needs, and God wants us to do that, but for the needs of others and to pray for our church. God wants lost people to be saved. Pray your church will reach lost people and, 
And you know, I, I, in most churches, I was just thinking of a church of 100 people. More Southern Baptist churches run 100 or less on Sunday than any other. But what if only a third of the people in the church led someone to Christ in one year? Most of those folks would join that church where the person attended who led them to the Lord. But say you one-third led 33, maybe 20 would join the church and be baptized. That's probably more than that church is baptizing. And, you know, every three years you can just think the number of people that could be reached for Christ. Oh, friends, can you say to others, be like me in witnessing, be like me in reading the Bible, be like me in attending church, be like me in tithing and giving, be like me in praying. Well, maybe in one of those areas or more you can, but if there's some area in your life where you would not be able to say that, just even now, say, Lord, I want you to help me to be a better witness. I want you to help me to get more committed in my attending church. Lord, I want to be committed in reading through the Bible. Lord, I want to not only be a tither, I want to give beyond my tithe. And Lord, I want to be a person of prayer every day to pray not only for myself, but for others. And folks, I believe even you will be amazed at what you'll see God do through your life. God leaves us here on this earth after we get saved to tell other people about Christ. Instead of taking us to heaven then, He leaves us here to represent Him in this world in making a difference for Jesus Christ. If you're watching this program, you've never been saved, you want to be saved, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believe He died for your sins, that He rose again, He conquered death, and through faith, belief, and trust in Jesus, you are forgiven of your sins and you have eternal life. And I want everyone who watches this program to be able to say it as I close out this program every week. Thanks be to you, O God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On a hill called Calvary What looked like the feet Was how the Lord won victory For there on a cross Where He was crucified His blood paid sin's debt On that day when Jesus died it took the blood of the Lord to save my soul. It took His blood to cleanse and make me whole. It took His blood for my sins to be washed clean. It took His blood for me to be redeemed. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. For all have sinned and come short of God's plan for mankind. But redeemed by Christ's precious blood, my sins are pardoned for all time. Christ rose from the grave to conquer death triumphantly. His blood is life-giving blood through which I'll live eternally. It took the blood of the Lord to save my soul. It took the blood to cleanse and make me whole. It took His blood for my sins to be washed clean. It took His blood for me to be redeemed. 
It took the blood of the Lord to save my soul. It took His blood to cleanse and make me whole. Yes, it took His blood for my sins to be washed clean. It took His blood for me to be redeemed. Yes, it took His blood for my sins to be washed clean. It took His blood for me to be redeemed. Folks, did you know that we can now evangelize the world with what I have in my hand right here, this cell phone, live and on demand through the Creative Christian Network through which this program airs, A Fresh Start, and some other wonderful programs. So the information is there on the screen, how you can make contact. And boy, I tell you, it's an exciting day how we can get the gospel message this way throughout the entire world. In addition to my service with Back to the Basics Ministries and the Fresh Start TV program, I'm also the pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church in Hernando, Mississippi, located at 625 Highway 51 South. We're about two miles north on Highway 51 of the town square in Hernando. Coming out of the Memphis area, North Mississippi, you get off at exit 284, Pleasant Hill, Nesbitt Road, North Hernando exit. Go to the four-way stop, Highway 51, turn left, and we're about two miles on the right in a two-story octagon-shaped building. About a half mile before you get to the church, you'll drive under Interstate 69. Our services are at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday and at 5.30 p.m. on Sunday evening. If you're visiting in the Memphis area, live in North Mississippi, or Hernando, come visit us at Fellowship Baptist Church.